I'm the kid. I write Vice's Sunday weed column. I love weed so much that I decided to make a whole show about it. When I started it last fall, I had no idea that weed was about to be legalized in two states. All kinds of subcultures came to light, but the most fascinating one was also the fastest growing. Butane hash oil, an extract that's pure THC. Welcome to Weedicate. I first started smoking weed in 1988 when my big brother took me out in his Volkswagen bus into a big old field, handed me a bong full of swag, and said, here, hit this until you throw up. So I did, and I threw the fuck up in a field. I definitely smoked oil in 94 for the first time. I was at a fucking rainbow gathering. <laughs> and this dude passed me a bong and said, here, light it. And then I hit that. At least a minute or two later, I was definitely, it was, it was the most psychedelic experience I'd ever had on, on weed at that point. And I asked him, what is going on? He said, there's honey oil on it. That was my introduction to hash oil. Dabbing is basically having a dabber, which is something needle-like to grab the oil and apply it to whatever you're using. Generally titanium, but you can also use quartz and you can use glass. Take my blowtorch, heat up my titanium, inhale. Done. Is oil for everyone? That's a tough question. It really depends on what you're looking for. Where flowers were for me, they aren't for me anymore. I like the way oil's intensity works. I like the way when you first hit it, you get kind of a rush. Every single time I hit oil, I get high. I can hit it 30, 40 times in a day, and I'm still getting higher. There has been an explosion. Massive explosion. An explosion leads police to a drug lab. What was being made in this garage drug lab behind me? Something called butane honey oil, a very toxic and highly common. Inside this garage behind a home, investigators believe a man has been cooking marijuana, a highly dangerous procedure similar to cooking meth. You can see it become more popular because when you look in the news every other day, people blowing each other up. It was basically just idiots not knowing what they're playing with. <laughs> they would take a bunch of wheat and they would take a bunch of butane, put it into a big fat dish and throw it on the stove and think it's gonna purge it. And then, yeah, you blow up your fucking house real fast. There's great videos on YouTube of people doing that. It just goes in like that, see that? You squish it down, make sure. Oh, that's great. Little kids doing it. That's one of the best videos ever. <laughs> The way to do it is you get a tube packed with a bunch of weed. You want glass. Generally, people use turkey basters. And make sure it's the right one with a needle attachment that your can of butane perfectly fits into. And then blast. It basically just sends butane right through the tube. On the bottom, you want a coffee filter. And I put a mesh screen around that with a metal band tightener. Boom, into a Pyrex dish. And it all comes out into a nice puddle. So you use your butane to extract your THC, and you want to remove the butane because you don't want to smoke butane, so you purge. You want to basically put your bowl that you blasted into in hot water. It's going to have an initial really violent reaction. When that's done, it's going to be still reacting, but really, really slowly. Now, some people throw it in the oven, some people go right to vac at that point. In this one, we went right to vac. What that does is like, it keeps the, the oil in a really viscous state, and then it, it helps the purge. So we're about to have a little taste of the yield of the process we just witnessed. It came out to shatter. This is something you try to attain. And that looks like kind of a really big fucking dab right there too. Come on, keep going. There you go, you got it. See? When you purge correctly, it's nice and smooth no matter how big it is. Yeah, that tastes really good. Yep. No chemically taste at all. Tastes like pure. Pure hash oil. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Words. Wow. This guy opened my eyes to a totally new way to get high off of weed. One that gets you just so much goddamn higher than smoking it normally. For such an awesome substance, BHO has a pretty serious dark side. 
I wanted to find out how the authorities were looking at this explosive new form of hash extraction. <coughs> so, so what are some of the experiences you've had as a cop regarding BHO in your area? We first saw one of the large explosions in 2009 from a BHO lab, and then we've also seen an expansion of finding evidence related to BHO labs, and it's growing in popularity. Yeah, I get you, man. And what are the differences between BHO and other drug epidemics like meth labs? Having a BHO lab and a meth lab are the same. You're using a volatile chemical that's highly explosive and highly flammable by people that are often using marijuana or BHO. It makes for a very dangerous combination. And what are some of the dangers of BHO? Can you give us <coughs> can you give us an example of a particularly bad explosion? One was so violent that it blew the house partially off its foundation and created a huge fire. All right, all right. And what do you think about Colorado? I think Colorado's going to be very sorry that they passed that law within a year or two. We've seen uh, people smoking and having a good time in the party atmosphere. But when you start having people producing it next door to you, you're going to have people that are going to try to take that marijuana or the, the profits from that marijuana. So, we're here in Denver at the Cannabis Cup, and man, if we thought that dabbing was a growing trend, then we didn't see shit before this, because there are seriously dozens of bars everywhere with like the most elaborate dabbing glass, and they're just doling out dabs, and we're about to go check out a couple of the places that are doing this, and take a few dabs. I went down to Denver for the first ever Cannabis Cup held on U.S. soil in a state that legalized weed just last year and has quickly become America's weed mecca. Here, BHO is big business, and we checked out totally legal operations dedicated to making shit tons of it, which they distribute to local dispensaries. We're here with Daniel Desai at Top Shelf Extracts in Denver, Colorado. How long have you guys been in business over here? We've been in business about two and a half years now. What usually happens is a, a dispensary will contract us to process their trim from their grows. Okay, and so you're using- And most of them can't process in-house. And how much BHO do you guys pump out in like a given week? Uh, approximately three to four pounds of it. It's great to be able to make this at home but it's also awesome to be able to come into a laboratory and take those extra steps in, in getting professional equipment. And then we have a $15,000 turbo molecular vacuum pump here right. that's used for laboratory it's research. It's obviously better. We're at a forefront of a movement that allows us to work like this. Everything is all under the supervision of the Colorado Medical Marijuana Enforcement Agency. Right. Every gram of this is accounted for. I wouldn't expect nothing less. We're in the middle of Right. Legalizing a product that has been illicit for, you know, 60, 70 years. Yeah, so there's got to be a lot of control. There's growing pains. A lot of people have worked a really long time to make people comfortable with a natural plant that grows out of the ground. I think the largest danger is people looking for a way to discredit marijuana gravitating towards this. All these dangers that you perceive are just another argument for legalization. Whether you want to use BHO, or if you don't want to use it, you still want to live in a society that regulates it reasonably. I'm about five dabs in right now, and they're all that fucking big. <laughs> Just like that last one. Is that five right there? Yeah, so <laughs> definitely getting a little bleary. Um, <laughs> definitely starts hurting your lungs for a little bit. I'm smoking cigarettes too, like an asshole. Um, but so far, so good. Um, I think my memory's intact, so. I guess we should probably go do a couple more dabs. Let's do that. I need maybe like five minutes. <laughs> At the Cannabis Cup itself, where thousands of potheads from all over the world convened, butane hash oil was flowing like wine. I managed to consume buckets of it during my time there along with everyone else and it was good vibes all around. All this tells us that BHO and extracts like it are exploding with popularity. More people are learning about it, more people want it, and more people are willing to risk their lives by making it where it's not available. All for a cleaner, stronger high. 
you're gonna see like people's moms asking about it and stuff like that. Like it's already in all the medical places and people through your grandparents age, through younger than you are definitely getting this. There's just no stopping this. We got the internet, we got everything. It's just, it's game on, it's not going anywhere. It's only getting bigger. Thank you.